everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Derek Porter. Hello. Yes. Someone said in the uh, comments, the triumphant return of Wigsby. Um, <laughs> although I would argue that this was his triumphant return. I believe Derek's triumphant return would have been uh, his rock band thing in uh, oh, Virtual That Con. was so fun. You know, I yeah. was planning to go to bed, right? And I was like, all right, I'll watch one song. And then I said, all right, I'll wait till Z's on. And then you put Z last. I was like, ah, fine, I'll watch oh, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I had to give Z props because I had an, another guest that couldn't couldn't follow through. I, I needed somebody to sing Smooth by Santana because obviously that's what I edited my credits, credits or scroll to. So I need somebody to do it. Um, so I asked him and he was he was very gracious to, to, to pull it off. So. So yeah, that's why he was last because he had to do had to do the the big finale. <laughs> he also did the best, I think. Maybe not the best singing, but definitely the best uh, and the effort he put into it. I thought, but everyone did a great job. And... Oh yeah, it, it's it was it was it was an experiment, and I was super gracious gracious to everyone that was like okay with the fact that it could have it could have been horrible. <laughs> you know, it's like it might not work. You know, especially in the early stages when I was still building everything. But I have to talk about Virtual Gaming Con for just one second, because for me, that event was more significant probably to, to me than maybe to anybody else. Is because it was because obviously I have history with the Dice Tower, and now I'm with Board Game Geek. And then with the Rock Band thing, I had con contacts from my live music days. And so and, and other than my high school reunion, it's like that event represented like every major cornerstone of my adult life. <laughs> It, it was, was kind of a fun, fun trip. It was good. So if you don't know, folks tuning in, Derek was our, our previous video editor for Dice Tower, had to move back to Colorado, and then somehow Aldi snagged him. Uh, so now he's a video editor at BGG. So if people don't know what that means, like what do you do behind the scenes? Um, so it, it, now everything's because everybody's adapting to what's going on in the world right now. But um, but my main goal was I was going to I, I edit the game night episodes. And when we do the uh, news show, the board game geek show, uh, I was cutting those. Those are like kind of my main things. And then also um, sort of spearheading production for convention coverage and things like that. Well, right now we've kind of adapted to doing a lot more streaming content. So uh, I've kind of been sort of the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as Lincoln calls it, the one doing the brain damage <laughs> to learn how to use new tools and software to adapt to what we're doing on streaming. So, um, I think so. That's kind of my main role. Yeah. Don't you agree? I mean, there's a lot. Okay, so there's a lot of things that come into effect when it comes to working with uh, video and stuff. So, video and Derek came when we were just doing audio. Audio is a pain. Sometimes even more so than video. Um, and then doing a live show is a pain, and there's all things involved. But I have never found something so prone to errors as streaming is and with such a if i can be somewhat mm -hmm. non nice such a demanding audience yeah um it's well see, i'm not as intimidated by it but i think it's because uh like i said i, I was a, I, I did live music and performances in theater and things so i kind of cut my teeth so to speak on live events so I kind of I kind of welcome it and I'm I'm I love to try to like I love trying to solve those problems like whenever there is a hiccup it's like okay what can I do what can we do to implement something into the system so that 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 either doesn't happen as often or doesn't happen at all Yeah but it's um, stressful when it happens Oh, you're oh sitting yeah there no and question everything goes wrong and, and people are just sitting there going oh well, you're slow you shouldn't do this if it's slow Oh yeah it's a it's a learned uh, it's a learned skill to keep your cool i mean well my rock band thing was rife with a few technical issues and it's like it's it's hard to not just like lose it and throw your hands up in the air like going come on why is this not working <laughs> you know um but uh but it's oh yeah i was gonna show i was gonna flash up real quick i still have it by the way i have my uh <laughs> how did, wait how did you oh you can make that show up on skype Oh well, I'm I I'm running through my switcher. Uh, I have a I use a Blackmagic web presenter to mount my switcher on as a webcam. It makes it makes things like this a lot easier, so I don't have to reconfigure for a Skype call versus a stream call. So, um, but yeah, I still have my little my little dice guy. <laughs> I am commissioning more of them as we speak. I'm actually getting. Uh, yeah, one. I keep seeing the new ones pop up. They're awesome. Yeah, Tina's fantastic. In fact, I I should mention she just was. 
uh, an uh, RPG that she did um, the uh, artwork for was just nominated for an Emmy. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. I'm I'm looking to see if I can find it here. I see the voting for the Ennies Awards. Oh, it's closed. Alrighty. Well, then don't tell me I can vote for it if I can't. Let me see. Ah, never mind. I can't find it. But I but she posted it on her on her Facebook. Um, but she does some really fantastic stuff, and so I'm glad for that. All right, let's go to some questions. Derek, how was the climate change adjustment yet again? So you went from cold uh, to hot and hot to cold, dry to dry to uh, humid and humid to dry. I, I was I was ready to be done with Florida. Like I, I that was the one the biggest one of the biggest apprehensions I had about moving down there is it's like I I'm not comfortable in the heat. I, I I'm I'm one of those weirdos that looks at a, 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 a gray overcast day and just goes, eh, this is better. You know? So um, you know, the big sunny, hot, humid uh, was just I knew that was going to be a struggle for me. So I was I was really happy because when, when the day we flew back, there was snow on the ground. So it was kind of like, oh, it's nice to see this again, you know. <laughs> and unfortunately for Derek, he experienced the very worst of it, which means it's post hurricane. So post hurricane Irma, you know, you're like, oh, it's hot and muggy. It's summer and there's no electricity anywhere. The only way oh, to get man. cool is to go sit in your car. Uh, that was that was a struggle. The night uh, there was that one night I didn't have power, and I'm like, usually I've always thought like, hey, if I don't have power, I'm a board gamer. I can I can make do. I can get by until it's restored. But not being able to run AC that night, I was like, I didn't sleep at all. I was, uh, you know, it's like I I tried to go like sleep on my back porch, but <clears throat> the bugs were eating me alive. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's unfortunate. But you know, fortunately, it was only a day or so. Uh, yeah. And then the it was a rough day though for me. It was rough. <laughs> I wasn't was not ready to ready for him to handle something like that. Have you updated your personal editing rig tools since starting with Board Game Geek? Um, since I started, uh, well, um, I guess yes and no. I'm still in the process of uh, implementing it. But where is it? I said it somewhere. Oh, it's it's just off camera, out of reach. Here, give me one sec. So the, the company sent me one of these, and so I'm eager to see if I can implement uh, some of these shortcuts into Premiere uh, using this. That, so. is, that is a very awesome thing, to the point where yeah. we're actually considering replacing the humongous, expensive rig we have with that, mm -hmm. if we can figure out how to yeah. get some more HDMI cables into it. Yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, I've been, it's still kind of uh, I haven't personally handled one, so I'm like I've just been doing some research, and it looks like there's plugins, because I'm, I'm back to you know I've been uh, uh, working on Premiere because uh, when I was with you it was mainly Final Cut, but with Premiere, um, I forgot there's a few things with Premiere that I wish that it would do, and one of the things is like for game night we have a overhead camera. That has, we, it's a 4K camera, so I use 1080 crops to do like zoom ins on some of the you know close up action for the for the gameplay, and so I have some presets saved for like players like player one's uh, tableau, player two tableau, and there's no way in Premiere you can hotkey everything in Premiere except custom presets, and I was like, and if I was I wish I could I need to level up in like how to write scripts on, <laughs> on for computers because I'm like I wish I could just push a button. And it would just bring up my player one tableau. That would that would make editing so much faster. So I'm hoping I can do that with this thing. You can. Look at the, yeah. You can. <laughs> so I know you can because we've done it. Although for some reason mine has changed. So I run a a, a kids Bible study on Wednesday nights where mm -hmm. I stream it, and twice now they've seen the Dice Tower outro on that. <laughs> like thanks now kids for learning your Bible lesson. Support There's the dice quarter tower. Logistics. Yeah. <laughs> quarter master logistics. Like, what is this? Yeah, it's interesting though, folks. I don't think everyone realizes what a hard turn we've made this year. Uh, a hard, like, right or whatever. Because, you know, every year we go into the year, I do, and Board Game Geek and different, you know, we're like, okay, what can we do differently this year? What kind of stuff can we get? So we start making those plans, and then boom. Like, okay, guess what? You're going to be mostly live streaming and mostly from people's houses, which is different. All right, fine. Yeah, How long will we be doing that? Two months at the most. 
<laughs> that was the most <laughs> nerve wracking thing because we did we did a uh, we called it BGG Con line back in May where we kind of tried to do our convention uh, streaming format you know in, in remotely it was sort of a grand experiment to see can we do this and uh, the answer was yes with a with a with an asterisk because the the most challenging thing for me at least for me uh, in the production seat was I have no control over the equipment and tools that the guests are connecting with. So it's yeah. like if they, you know, have like a lame internet connection or a computer that just can't quite handle the call, it's like, I, I don't know, I can't do anything for you, <laughs> you know? That's, that's, that's the biggest hurdle is it's like, you know, having guests on stream, it's kind of like, we don't want to sound like we're being like, you know, exclusive, but it's like, we, there's some things we need to know, <laughs> you know before we have you on. It's that way it is, you know, uh, there's just a lot of simple things, and, you know, and this is stuff you learn as a whole, the whole nation, or slash world, I guess, the whole world is getting better at streaming because that's pretty much the only way to do things, you know, so. All right, let's see, Richard says, Derek, do you still have nightmares about the shed or the dude? <laughs> oh, man, the dude, I, I think if anyone has nightmares about the dude, it's you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, Can I tell? I, I need to tell the story when Z. Uh, well, it, it 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 due to a power outage, it was too perfect. But there was a a, a season where uh, whoever would get into the office first, which was usually you, um, or when someone was in the office alone while people were coming and going, they would move the the mannequin. We call uh, uh, yeah, Manny. Uh, is the dude? Did the dude finally pop? Is he still around? I don't he's know. He's still around. <laughs> he's 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 weak. He's weak willed, but yes. Yeah. Um, so we would uh, they would move mannequin like it, it, you'd you'd turn the corner and he'd be like in the kitchen or or something or like in the bathroom, and Z at one point I think you went out to walk because you you were walking uh, pretty regularly and so he went and grabbed the mannequin and stuck it in your office. And then we come back in, and we had a powwow in the editing bay area. And then I remember we had a power outage. We lost power, and it's like, oh, we don't have internet, so I guess we'll just we'll just kind of you know have a meeting and hash things out. And after the meeting, you go into your office where it's now dark, and <laughs> he's standing right there. And I remember you screamed so loud. <laughs> yes, and Kenny has run with this every single every single guest who's come for a top ten. I think he's gotten. Jeremy oh, Howard. Oh, really? <laughs> Jeremy Howard was, I think, the most shaken by it. But it's and 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 you might say, Tom, why are you telling people that? You'll forget. I promise you'll forget. Cause I forget. I bought the stupid thing. Um, there's there's, yeah. It's, well, it, that's, see, the, the, Kenny's a master because I remember he he doesn't just put it places. He like adjusts the head so it's like off kilter, you know. So it's like <laughs> he puts it doesn't the clown look like, hair like and a mask on it now. <laughs> Yeah, he like he changes some way so it's just unfamiliar enough to still terrify you, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Are there any still unadopted porch kittens at the studio? Well, no, they the cats. So Derek, the, you maybe not know, uh, a cat came and gave birth to kittens underneath the porch. All right, fine. So I told the oh, guys wow. to not feed the cats or they'd stick around. But then I felt bad. And had a moment of mercy and started feeding the cats. So they stuck around, and they got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, is that why you have the the cat plush die character? No, now? <laughs> I do that for the people, not myself. Um, so the uh, yesterday Mike and his Mike Mike and his wife's uh, their cat of thirteen years died over the weekend on Mike's birthday, unfortunately. So they were sad about that. Mike's like, "All right, I'm taking a couple of these kittens." So he they came in and played Trapper. And put uh, tuna inside the wow. kit thing, and it took a while. They finally caught. They caught them one at a time. They caught one, then they caught the other. Uh, two of the, th of the there was four kittens. Two of the four kits. Unfortunately, kit number four uh, we found, but not alive. Unfortunately, now, we're not sure what happened. Yeah, um, that's always rough. Yeah. So kit three and mom and dad were still there, but this morning they were not, and I think maybe they caught on to Mike's catching cats ways we'll see if they show up tomorrow but i put out food and catnip and nothing happens so i don't know oh that's an interesting turn of events yeah well, <laughs> well last week a pack of dogs showed up and i was like all right this is not turning into noah's ark 
you know. Are there's... you guys still are you guys still closing that front gate during the day? No, well, we did that because we had those big dogs come by for a while. Yeah, I remember for a while. Yeah, there were we had that there was a, someone's dog was running up and down that road and like was. <laughs> and it wasn't a small dog. It was quite a big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I remember, I think I went outside to take a phone call one time, and I was like, what is this thing running at me? <laughs> oh, I need to clarify here, Kabuki Kid, not the Emmys, the Ennies. The Ennies are an RPG award. Emmys would be pretty impressive, yes, but the Ennies are, are the RPG equivalent of, like, the Board Game Geek Awards. Still cool. Um... Let's see here. Talking, talking, talking. People are talking. Oh, today is tax. Oh, tomorrow's tax day. Last chance, everybody. July fifteenth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I had, uh, I had filed already, <laughs> and, and and paid my dues. So I was like, oh, it would have been nice to know. I could have held on to that money for a little longer. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, I just, I finally got it out of the way because it, it. The, the tax thing hangs over me like a cloud. I hate it so oh, much. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's the thing I heard you complain about the loudest. And I still <laughs> About, about, about still the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Well, now that I've started the Cruise and the Dice Tower East as separate companies, even oh, sure. more fun. <laughs> Let's see. How do you feel about changing your video review format to accommodate new equipment or technology? You know, changing... Changing is just something that, that comes with the territory. And if you don't change, you'll never get better. Uh, at the same time, you hit these ruts, right? You know, it's like, hey, this is how I record. This is what we do it in. Here's the card, so on and so forth. So I find it's best to make incremental changes. So this is right. stupid. You, you all probably won't get this. But this weekend, I got a 512 uh, gigabyte card. No. Yeah, gigabyte, right? Yes. Yeah. That's huge. Like, we've never had one that big. That's half the size of some of our computers were. Um, that's a small thing. Also, well, a bigger thing, we got a new overhead camera for the other studio. So Mike can do solo gaming playthroughs because that's just how life is now, you know, to, to show that sort of thing off. But we buy things a little bit at a time. And sometimes we buy a big thing. And we found that whenever we buy a big thing, it takes us a while to learn how to use it. Like, when we bought that live stream... It's awesome, but we're still learning how to use that. Well, thing. I remember, yeah, we, we got that, and then I think you guys all went on a trip. I think it was well, – there was a trip I didn't go. I, I don't know if it was Essen, um, but it's like that weekend. I just – I sat with that thing and learned as much as I could. But it's like, yeah, I'm, I've definitely – as I've – now that I've done this for a few years, I feel like I can speak with some authority. I'm like, I'm a big proponent of like master what you have and then level up. Master what you have, then level up. Master what you have, then level up. Because like I've run into a few folks that always, you know, they've come to me and it's like, so, um, you know, I, you know, they've asked me over the years, like, what gear do you use? So I went and bought everything that you're using. And I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> you do, do you know how this works? <laughs> you know? It's like you just created an uphill battle. It's like you, you haven't even like settled on a format yet for what you're going to do. Now you have to, you know, you have to like learn how to ride a bike while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, and the good news is things do get better all the time too. The hardest mm -hmm. thing for me to, to to tell what gets better is cameras. It's always hard to like we we spent agonize so much, still do agonize over cameras to the point where once you find a camera that works, it's hard to switch because you don't want to deal with the problems of the new camera, even if it's a better camera. And cameras yeah, well, like, don't upgrade every year like a computer does. So I don't know yeah. what the best one is. Well, like, for example, are, are you guys still using those, uh, those cam, those, uh, I can't even remember the, the HDK, uh, I don't even remember the model number on them. Um, but I remember I set custom keys for the white balance because I'll be honest, I don't think I remember where the white balance settings are in the menu of that camera. <laughs> You're like, right. I yeah, that and that's right. And so that's one of the things, right? And so once you figure that stuff out, it's hard to get a new one. But that's cameras. Yeah. Things like software are constantly changing. I wish when Derek first started that we had eCam like we have now. Because mm -hmm. OBS we were <laughs> we were like just like um look, we can make a film. Well I remember show we up. were trying to do we were trying I remember it, now now I know, now that I know what was happening, I have an understanding, but it's like we were trying to run all those cameras into a laptop right. through that 
shuttle and the the processor couldn't handle more than two at a time i think you could barely handle two yes um, which is why it was choppy um and that's why it's like when we looked into like things like the live stream where it's like hey this is a machine built to do the thing so we'll use that you know <laughs> and but the problem that, that you run into and and derek and me know this because we are two of maybe 10 people in the world who really kind of does this. When you go online and say, I'd like to learn more about this, they're like, so you want to know how to stream your video games? No, that's not yeah. what I was asking. But there's thousands and thousands of you know pages of information on how to stream your Xbox and your PlayStation and your computer. Yeah. But yeah. you say, how do I do an overhead shot of a board game and combine that with myself? And people are like, why would you want to do that? Yeah, because like, and because like, you can look at like, oh yeah, here's an overhead shot and how to light it. But it's like, yeah, but you don't light a game the way you would light a typical overhead shot, you know. So it's like, there's all this, all this experimentation that's not always readily available. My local game group always jokes that it's like, someday I, you know, they're like, you could give a TED talk on how to. Do, he's like, you know, way too much about how to how to do board games media. Like nobody cares. <laughs> that is the thing. Well, Derek and I and uh, Jeremy Salinas, we did a thing one time. At Gen Con. That was about it was, it was about editing mainly I think yeah it was like like uh, editing concepts and like workflow I think at least that's what I remember. <laughs> like twenty people came right it wasn't. Yeah. And that's fine and I get it you know it's it, it's an interesting thing and it's funny because you get so many people who ask questions on how to do it but you can't it's not a single answer question someone will email me and go all right I'm starting a podcast or a video thing what are some tips I'm like ah neither you that's nor a, I have two yeah, weeks. That's, that is my new go-to, like, canned answer. As I said, master what you have. It's like, shoot on your phone, learn how to learn how to white balance on your phone, learn how to color balance, learn how to get a good shot and understand, you know, what <laughs> what the look you want is and how to get it with what you have. And then once you once you understand that, then you can start looking, when you start shopping for a camera, now you know what you're kind of shopping for. So it's like, I need a camera that has really responsive X, Y, Z. Like, some people are like, they just want a camera that has a remote, you know? And it's like, well... You know, you wouldn't know that until you've got to the point where you realize that, oh, I really I really need to be able to move the camera from from like, you know, for example, like I've got a remote for my camcorder that I'm shooting on right here because I'm like, I can't I can't reach to make adjustments. You know, <laughs> Richard says you guys anticipate 5G changing how you stream. Not for a while. Yeah. Um, I just want to have a T1 connection in every house. Yeah, I don't. This is I, I don't want it to be like I, I, I say this with hesitancy because I don't want to like spread misinformation. But my my main concern with 5G is that in the past when they add the G's, it's affected the pro audio industry because it reduces the frequency bandwidth range for wireless microphones to function. So that's like my biggest concern is when that happens. It's like, oh, no, am I going to have to replace all of my wireless? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh you know, it's it's interesting. We're, um, that, there has been no official statement that that's happening, but I'm just saying every time they've added a G, <laughs> uh, you know, they've added another G. Um, usually, there's a you know a bunch of new lines of uh, wireless uh, pro audio wireless products because a uh, certain frequency bandwidths are no longer uh, legal. <laughs> that is true. Well, we'll see. Um, what the dog is here? All right, come here. Nope. Come here, fuzzy people want to see you. Come here. Fine, I will bribe you here with a treat. Yeah, okay. So there's no love. <laughs> oh, well, hello there. Say hi, everyone. All right, have fun. Thanks for showing up. All right, anyhow. Um, Halo says, do you make plans for the Dice Tower alone, or do you sit with Z, Roy, and Mike as in a meeting to run it by them? How's your process? Our process is constantly changing. Um, I'm, I'm the high-level guy where I think up ideas, and sometimes they happen or not. Z is off on a tangent, kind of does his own thing sometimes, especially now that he's working from home. And then, you know, people just come with ideas, and we run them or not. I'm not afraid to try new stuff, but I'm also not afraid to cancel new stuff if it doesn't work. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it's weird because I, I'll, I'll get people all the time and they'll say, man, I've been, I've been doing this for years and it doesn't get bigger or better. And if you're not satisfied with that, then I think you should stop. You know, and if you, if you are satisfied with it, then fine. 
but you can't do both. You can't complain that you're not going to get bigger or whatever, but then keep doing the same thing. So we've done some definite things that we've like, whoops, that was a kind of a stupid idea. You know, I still remember on YouTube, I don't know if you were with us when we tried to stream on two accounts. Were you here when we did that? When we streamed? Yeah. Oh, no, no. But I was I, I, I was following. Yeah. You did the live gaming marathon and you had a, another a contributor uh, shoot, uh, have a stream a camera on their channel. Well, sure. And that was you the guys... first year. But the second year on YouTube, you can stream on two different channels on your own oh, thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you could switch between the cameras. Yeah. And that does not if, if work you're on, If you're well. on a desktop PC, you had to be on a desktop PC for that to work, I think. Yeah. Because it wouldn't work on like a tablet or mobile or anything. So, yeah. Wow, uh, yeah. That yes. was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, what's your wildest Florida memory in general? Wildest Florida memory? Um, well, I think it's just my experience of moving down there uh, is like I, I, Florida wasn't giving me a very good first impression because like I move in and I'm trying or I'm trying to move in actually I drove a moving truck down there and I technically didn't have a place to to move into because there was like it felt like all like the logistics and stuff of Florida for like you know trying to set up internet or utilities or anything like that it just seems to move at a very slow pace like I felt like that why why is this so hard and why you know like things little things like why can't i pay online why do i have to go in person you know those like, so associations are of the devil they really are yes they are <laughs> <laughs> and uh man yet yeah, yeah well you and i both know i think i think you and i both have had the same worst hoa experience ever so. <laughs> which one was that Oh, the, that the, one. The, oh, the, yes. The old new studio. Yeah. <laughs> the the temporary. Uh, yeah, we still laugh about that. That that that. Okay, actually, that that's my wildest Florida memory is the whole somebody broke into the house technically, and I know they wouldn't admit that, but that's technically what they did, to uh, to report us to the HOA that we weren't living there. It's one of those things that was such such a pain in the neck, and yet at yeah. the same time, I'm glad it happened because the place we went to was so much better. Oh yeah, although although I gotta say, I'm super jealous of all these digs. <laughs> the where oh the the warehouse the warehouse yeah. and stuff in Dallas. What a sweet setup that is. Yeah, it's uh, I was there for the company retreat and they kind of gave us a tour of like because I was kind of like I, I'm still sort of learning exactly just how like and how many different circles that are outside of my out of my sphere of influence that operate within the company and I was like oh it's like. It's a full-blown, like, you know, fulfillment center for the geek up bits and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, there is also, I think there is an entire, uh, I don't know what they're called, but like uh, the racks for, for pallets and stuff. There's basically one of those is, uh, I think all these personal collection. Uh, at your next high school reunion, what would you brag about? My high school reunion would be pretty sad. It's just me. <laughs> I actually had my 20 year reunion in 2019. Um, it, was, it was, yeah, it was like right after I moved back is that it was that following summer and it was really hard cause I was still kind of in transition. And so I was like, you know, I'm kind of transitioning to a new job and I was also, I had moved back, but I was living with my in-laws and then I was moving into where I'm living now. So I was like, it was like, I was sort of like this, like, I don't really know what I'm doing right now. Um, cause I was like, I, I was working wherever I could set up my computer. It was like, I would find a quiet place and it's like, Hey, you've got good Wi-Fi. Cool. Do you mind if I hang out here and edit videos for a while? <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, uh, but so it was really hard to explain to people what I was doing. <laughs> and yeah. most of them were just like, they're like, wait, what? like it, it's the whole thing. Like, so you make videos about board games like Monopoly, you know, it's that whole conversation where it's like, well, there's, there's actually some pretty robust board games out there and there's a, there's a massive community and you know, it's like how, how deep down in the rabbit hole do you want me to show you? You know, I don't. <laughs> yeah. What BGG geek bits would you say is the best? I know quacks bits are great, but the root bags look good too. Um, I have to say that, like, as far as uh, as what it adds to the game, um, and I don't personally own it, but uh, the Quacks bits, hands down, it's like, it's almost like, why would you not? <laughs> you know? Um, 
but for me personally, um, it was the first uh, set they did, the Orleans set, uh, which ah. is really funny because, as you know, Tom, I think I've upgraded or my Orleans bits five times. <laughs> I've it's... probably bought different. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ways to upgrade them. Yeah, I upgraded Quacks twice, and yeah, I had the Meeple Source uh, ones for a while, and then I actually bought the the Stone Meyer bits uh, for for all the Orleans goods and stuff like that. So yeah, I I think yeah, I have too much Orleans upgrades. I finally went through and like like got rid of like I I grouped some stuff off and gave it away to some friends at one point, but because the 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 geek bits are the best, but. I agree, and that's that's my answer too. The roots bags are nice, but I've come to the conclusion that those bags are not necessary. They look good, but I almost prefer clear bags just so I can see what's in the bag. I know it seems weird, but those those drawstring bags are nice. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, quacks. I'm almost where I don't think I would even play it without them. I actually wanted I mean, to put quacks as best expansion of 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, obligatory. Hey, if you think some of the bags, the geek bags are cool, you should get them. But I totally understand where it's like with a, when it's just a clear plastic bag, if you're missing a piece, you can see that it's in the bag. <laughs> you know? Alrighty. Uh, when it comes to conventions, how much of your equipment comes with you to, be, to feel prepared? Well, um, it's that's going to be kind of an interesting thing because... Uh, Usually what happens is is I bring um, – I have a mixer that's very similar to the one that I spec for – I don't know if you guys are still using that Behringer. I, I assume so. Um, uh, but it's a very similar rack-mounted mixer that you operate with a laptop. I bring that in and um, – and I bring thing. I bring a lot of backline stuff like microphone stands and uh, it just it just just kind of odds and ends of things that like, because Lincoln's the one that carries everything in on his back. He's got the Pelican full of cables and cameras and the PC and <laughs> and all that. Um, but things are different now because I actually have a lot of our equipment here. The last show that I did uh, was Gan. And um, I I brought home our cameras that we use uh, for convention coverage. So I have those. And then I also, they sent me, BGG was very gracious to let me use one of their live stream PCs for my rock band thing. So I have one of our streaming PCs. Um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's like, officially, it's the one we use as a backup. Um, and then, um, so yeah, next time I do a show, I'm not sure. I... I'm looking into like is it I want to find out if it's worth it to just build like a travel rack because I don't know if you remember Tom but when I first started I got that big black rack that you did, wasn't sure what it was for and we ended up not using it so I took it and I I still use it actually <laughs> um, but uh, that that thing is technically meant for travel it has a TSA key on it and stuff like that so I'm like I wonder if I can if I can just build that rack up and then it's it's technically a piece of oversized luggage and would probably weigh more than 55 pounds i wonder if it's worth the cost to just pay for them to you know for me to check that because that would be the easiest thing for me to do because with the rack everything's already pre-assembled and it's like i show up we plug cameras in and audio and turn everything on and then we can start <laughs> you know everything's already like assembled but um, that's probably what I'll do, but I don't know when we'll be doing that again. It's kind of a, that's definitely up in the air. So my answer to that is as little as I can. Because I really, really, really don't, I, I get nerve wracked over moving stuff. The only way I'd be happy really is to have a set of, of equipment that only goes to cons. Because mm -hmm. there's always the chance something will get broken or ruined and stuff. And also, we found that going to cons, unless I'm doing, like, BGG does their whole setup, right? So that's fine. I would take in what yeah. I need for that. If I'm not doing yeah, that we, setup. Yeah, we, we bring more than most would go, I mean, the most, like, content folks would take to a convention for sure. All right, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, three. That, that's true. That's one thing someone mentioned Jason's 3D video didn't work too well. That's one thing we thought would be awesome. And it not only was it not awesome, it hasn't taken off at all. And it would crack no. us up because we would post a 3D video. In the front of the video, Derek would put a message that says, this is a 3D video. In the description, we would put, this is a 3D <laughs> oh, video. Love... In the title, we uh, put 
3D video. <laughs> and then the thumbnail, I put that that that, that bug in the corner, and it, yeah. Um, I remember if, if some of you are here and left these comments, uh, I love you. But I loved everyone that said, "How come I'm just seeing your feet?" And I'm like, "Ah, you must be watching this standing up." And the people are like, "How come I can just see the ceiling?" Say, like, "Ah, you're watching this in bed, lying down." Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's like you can move the camera. <laughs> Uh, and you know what? I've been watching the internet, and there's still some 3D stuff occasionally. It's just not good enough yet. It's kind of like when I was yeah. in the 90s when they were talking about video phones, and everyone said, that's the future, and it never happened until smartphones came along. Yeah. Well, and I just – the other thing I've kind of sort of discovered is that every once in a while I kind of get, like, a read on, like, how someone experiences the content we do. And – I, I hear a lot of people like, oh yeah, I like to put on the background or like I have it I have it playing on my Bluetooth speaker while I'm getting ready in the morning and stuff like that. And I'm like, with 3D, like you have to 100% engage. It's not yes. like, oh, you put this on in the background and you know you're you're listening and you check in when something interesting you know catches your attention. But it's like with 3D, it's like no, you, you need to sit down and and engage to experience what you know three uh, the 360 content. So um, and I just I think. I'm learning that a lot of people don't really do board game content that way. Like, I mean, sure, I'm sure they'll sit down and watch like a top ten list, but it's like, do they, you know, you know, is that is that real? I don't think a, a large majority of folks that are uh, consuming gaming co uh, media content aren't like that's not the experience they're looking for. It sounds good, like oh, I want to sit there and be part of the game, but until virtual glasses, we'll see what these new Apple glasses do. That might be a game changer, but it might be a dud. Right. But like, I remember we talked about, like, we had this idea with that 360 cam of trying to do, like, a game of dead last, where, like, it, you, you would be in the middle of the table, and you can just turn and look at whoever you want to and see what's going on, you know. But it's just, I don't know if that's the kind of content people want. It's not the know? same kind of work because, you sh because most people don't sit in the middle of the table. That's the thing, right? Yeah. You don't sit in the middle of the table. You sit on the side of the table. And you look at mm -hmm. everybody, and you just have to move your head a little bit. All right, Derek, I know you were, are a big video gamer. That is uh, a slight uh, understatement. Yeah. Kabuki kid. Hey, Any good uh, new video game experiences? Uh, oh, well, there was this really cool rock band stream that happened a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I won't actually say it here. You can find it if you want it, because Tom said this is not a promotional thing. But no, I do no, have no, a no, no, you can promote. <laughs> yeah. I meant it's. Uh, I do have a Twitch channel, um, and I'm not super consistent because you know, work is what it is. But uh, whenever I've got a wild hair or a game I'm excited about, I like to fire up and play. I do occasionally play Rock Band on my own. If you saw the VGC Rock Band stream, my typical Rock Band streams are not that produced. It's usually just by myself in this office you know, <laughs> uh, rocking out. But, um, so yeah. Uh, but as far as new stuff, there was like, I don't know if it, any of you are a Nintendo switch owners, but like they've been doing these ridiculous sales on indie games on Nintendo switch, like every week since the, uh, lockdown started. And so I've bought all these like really cool adventure games. I played one called my brother rabbit. That was this sort of like emotional moving tale about like a, a child's toy, um, I don't want to spoil anything because it's 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 really cool, but it's like so I've been just kind of like finding these like indie gems on Switch that are like you know sixty five percent off and <laughs> playing those. Well, I'm so, excited. Uh, I just found out today. I'm I'm out of the loop, right? I, mm -hmm. I I I play the Switch. In fact, right before I did this, I was playing the Switch with my kids, having a great time playing a game that probably isn't for kids, but that's not the point. Um, I just found out that Paper Mario is coming out this weekend. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, I'm hoping um, I'm hoping I get some. Uh, my birthday is on July 31st. Yeah, as usual, my birthday always falls in the middle of Gen Con. Um, but I'm hoping I get some eShop cards because I want to pick that one up. <laughs> I haven't played a P Paper Mario in ages. Was there one for the Wii U? Yeah, and one thing to know about Paper Mario though is it's it's like the the first couple games were sort of like. RPG, like kind of trying to re-implement Super Mario RPG a little bit. It had a sure. little, it, it played a little bit like that. Then they've had a few like action-driven ones, and some of them have got a little bit more gimmicky. So, but I think this one looks like it has some of the RPG elements in it. So, like there was a Super Mario, or Super Paper Mario on Wii that was like actually an action platformer. It wasn't RPG at all. 
Um, so not not all of them are like you're not getting the same experience if you just because it says Paper Mario. But this one I think is sort of like the main RPG type series. And I there was a so. yeah, there was a couple on Wii U I think, but the Wii U and 3DS they were run together. Like I know there was one on 3DS, but I forget which one was on which system. <laughs> the Wii U is my is the Nintendo system I I played the least. Um, I'm still of the opinion that the Switch is the best Nintendo system to date. It is amazing. It is. And... I have only one gripe about Nintendo Switch, and it's it's just because I'm me. Um, uh, they it, it, like I love to buy like those uh, like they have those Mega Man collections. So it's like yeah, it's like these old Nintendo games. Um, however, <laughs> because of the wireless uh, controllers, there's a slight latency issue. So some of those older games that are a little more technical uh, in their gameplay don't translate as well. And to get around that, you have to play in handheld mode for a little slightly better experience, which is fine. But, you know, I like being able to just put it on the TV. So that that's my only drawback with the Switch is, like, because of the wireless controllers, there's a slight latency issue. And if you don't believe me, if you played Super Mario Odyssey and did the jump rope challenge, tried to do the jump rope challenge, you can't do it. I don't think you... I mean, I guess if you really wanted to invest the timing and figure out what the latency is, you can do it on a TV. But when I was trying for weeks to get that power moon in that game with the jump do the jump rope a hundred times but if you do it in handheld mode i did it on my second try <laughs> so. i give up after those and i'm like ah, i don't need that that garbage and then i find someone who's good at video games to do it for me um yeah so yeah that's interesting um the switch i do like the switch all right let's see what we got here people are still talking about cardboard um Blah, 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 blah. People are talking about Altiplano and Orleans and talking about cats and dogs. And now talking about soap and how to kill odor and tomato bath for skunk spray. What is going on here? Uh, I did see someone asked a question earlier about like a recommended software to start streaming with. Um, to see if you even like doing this, uh, it, it it's it's an uphill battle and you have to do a lot of leveling up and research online but obs is the place to start don't invest money in streaming unless you know it's like unless you're doing it and you love it um yeah so if, you have a, it, if you have a mac ecamm is not too bad i want i don't think it's that expensive but and there's also stream deck i haven't i haven't messed with stream deck too much it's made by the same people who make your that thing you just showed off or it works with them i think Oh, the 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 Elgato, yeah. Um, or it's Stream De Stream Deck is looks like it's built on top of OBS. But you're right; you just got to find something. I mean, honestly, some things you can just turn on Facebook and stream too, if you want. Yeah, I mean, it depends on you know if you got a vision for what you're trying to do, you'll learn the tools. Like I've settled in; I've kind of with Board Game Geek, I'm in discovering VMix, and um. There are some things that I like from Livestream Studio a little bit better, but VMix has the best call-in I've seen of every streaming service that has that feature. Like, I remember with Livestream, we tried it once. I tested it, I think, with Mark Street one time or something, and it was like, this is not usable. This isn't going to work. It was terrible. It's like, I think we could do better by just, like, plugging in a laptop with Skype. <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, VMix has, depending on the level you subscribe at, you can have, like, uh, I personally have the one where you can have the four callers at a time, and they just, they're, it's it's a browser-based call, and you can set up the output of, like, what they see and even the bus mix of what they hear. This is how we kind of did our convention coverage where I had, like, a mix going to a production crew, and then, you know, I would bring the guest in and then change their bus so that's like they're, they they kind of come live. And so it was, like, it was it was very robust and it was like it was I think VMix was the only way we could have done what we've done. So VMix is kind of my favorite right now, but I know that it's like it's it, it's not for everybody. It's like it, it, you need to make sure it does what you want it to do, what you're trying to do. What has been the biggest lesson you've learned while working during lockdown? Um. Let's see, I'm trying to think of the most succinct way to say it. It's probably just like making sure you that you end your day. <laughs> uh, there's been a couple days uh, with the lockdown, and it's like because everything's changing, so it's like it's like there's a lot of like you know I like okay, so I was like I might be done editing for the day. I'm like all right, so I'm gonna dig in and research this aspect of Emix. Then I'll look up, and it's like my wife and kids are in bed, and I'm like oh man, <laughs> you know. So it's like trying to make sure that I still have you know 
work home life boundaries. Uh, during, I mean, that's, that's kind of the typical work from home thing anyway, but like, because everything's kind of been like pivoting and like almost sort of like learning a new role. Uh, I have to be extra careful about like how much time I'm actually spending in front of my computer. Yeah, very similar. I would say I try to to keep days normal. Do mm-hmm. things at night with the family. Do things during the day. Don't sleep in. Get up when you want. You're just not as productive that way. But I'll tell you what. The biggest thing I learned is how much I need people. I'm an extrovert by nature, and I don't necessarily just somebody to talk to. Yeah, like talking on the phone. But I've talked to people for a half an hour about nothing anymore. Um. And just being able to talk to people is such a good thing. I mean, these daily chats, that's what they're good for. We just talk to each other. Somebody asked, more secure than Zoom. Um, well, Zoom is actually pretty low res, if you look at it closely. It's not, it doesn't look great. Yeah, I now I use Zoom. In fact, I'm using Zoom in a bit to play a werewolf game. But I don't get what the love for Zoom is. Zoom is okay. It's just not great. Yeah, um, it's I I I'm very unfamiliar with Zoom because basically when it first kind of came on the scene, someone was telling me it's like, oh, it you know, it's like it's one of those things. It's free, so therefore you're the product. So it's like I don't know, and I don't know exactly what that meant, but some so I just kind of sometimes have a standoffish thing with like things that are that are free and amazing. <laughs> so uh, so I kind of avoid it for a while, but now it's kind of become part of our. Uh, you know, like uh, a lot of people are using it for meetings now for a lot of these events that I'm doing. So it's like, OK, so I've kind of had to make friends with it. And it's 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 fine. I I, I don't know. I don't I just, like online meetings that much, though. Yeah. There's always somebody who is not using headphones or they're like, what? Huh? Yeah. And yeah. and it just seems like they're very unproductive to me. Yeah. Oh, that's. I was trying. Like, I was doing my darndest. Like when we first did the online thing, I was trying to brief all of our guests we had on. I was like, "Please wear headphones." And it's like, because because I, I, as the producer, I'm very well aware because I'm watching the clock of how much time we lose to. Can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. What? Uh, and then the delay of interrupting other people. And it's like, ah, uh, this is so. That, that that's the hardest thing. Is it's like I hate it when I lose so much time to just people going like I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, and this is behind the curtain a bit for everybody, but in a sense, one of the struggles with interviewing publishers and designers and all this stuff is that their job is publishing and designing and what have you. And Mm -hmm. yes, a few of them are amazing also on camera and such, like Stephen Boniker is an example. He's good on camera, and he knows how to carry conversation. A lot are not. That is not to say negative things about them. They're good at other things. I'm not a good publisher what have you. But that's sometimes a struggle, like, oh, this person is going to show off a game. In fact, <laughs> uh, without naming names, and this is years yeah. ago, Derek remembers the one publisher who we specifically said, stand behind a table, do not walk in front of the camera to show off your game. And <laughs> he just kept going around the table, and yeah. I was like, all right, you know, stop it. <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, and so that that's doubly more when tech gets involved. So, and again, I it's just something that you deal with. It's you know, it is the way it is. Oh, here's an interesting question: Is there a particular component or even mechanism that is the hardest to show in a video? Yes, I could rant about this forever, but I I, I despise and I will argue to the teeth that I think deck building games are the worst thing to do on camera. <laughs> really? Why? <laughs> um. Because so much of the juice and meat of a deck building game exists internally in players' heads, and there's not a lot of action on the table for the audience to grab. Now, some of them are better than others, like Clank, you know, because there's a lot, there's literally a board and, and stuff going on that you can that the audience can track with. But with a deck building game, usually we've got an overhead camera shot, which is like, I mean, nobody looks at a board game that way, but that's the easiest way to sort of display all the information. And, uh, you know, everyone's holding got, got their hand to cards, and it's like, and you know, unless you paid attention and read the cards when they bought them, you know, you can't really track with what's going on. I feel like to make a deck building game really be represented very well, you have to do a lot of extra work that we don't usually do for for live captures, and that's like, you know, like having graphical representation of every card. So when someone's sitting there mulling through their hand, you can see what they're seeing. So I just 
I've always been uncomfortable like when we live stream when I've done a live stream for a deck building game or even when I'm editing a deck building game episode I'm just like I don't know where the where, you know, like where's the action you know it's like I don't know what to go to <laughs> yeah tabletop was a great show but what people don't realize was that Will Wheaton spent hundreds of thousands on post editing on that show you know mm-hmm. so sure they recorded it they recorded the game sometimes twice and edit mm-hmm. them together then they take pictures of the graphics and come on. So when you watch it, you're also not watching the whole game. You're watching yeah. like a bum, 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 like a best of highlights of the game. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was very good, very well done, but it's not something you can replicate live. Yeah. So that and that's just me personally. I mean, it's like you, you. I reserve the right to be wrong, but I'm just like I. That is my least favorite thing. I just recently. I don't want to name the game, but I just recently cut an episode that you probably won't see for several weeks on game night. But it was. It's a deck building game, and it was it, personally it was a struggle to edit. And it's like hopefully that doesn't show in the cut, but uh, I just you know I just I have a hard time because like deck building games is you know because the way the way we play them we don't conver- you, you don't want to like narrate your entire turn or what you're holding because it's like it gives it kind of kills the spirit of the game for the players at the table. So it's like so you kind of keep it close to your chest like you would in a deck building game, but that's not great for the audience. And yeah, that's. That's just kind of kind of my thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, now they're talking about 3D on TVs. That was something that came and went too, like the 3D. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't buy thing. into that. <laughs> yeah, we used to have the biggest arguments, not biggest arguments, but there was always a debate when we would go as a dice tower to watch a movie, because Sam always wanted to see it in 3D, and I think he was the only person. And I was like, ah, I really like 2D better, and it seems like that's dying. Of course. I've been to a movie theater in months anyway. Right. You know. I, I see the... I remember Sam and I had to talk about it. And it's like I saw his point and it was like... Because you can get a pretty good audiovisual experience at home now. It's like it used to be a theater where yes. you went to get state-of-the-art sound and, and, and you know, an, an amazing display. But it's like you can get almost better than a movie theater, you know, if you have the, if you have the capacity to in your home to do that. People have home theaters. So it's kind of like... So I understand the whole thing. If I'm going to the theater, I want to get an experience that I that you know that like I can only get there. So I, I get that aspect of it. But at the same time, I was kind of like, but yeah, we all wear glasses. You know, the, 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 that's very uncomfortable <laughs> to wear 3D glasses. I just whenever I'm glasses. watching a 3D movie, I feel like I'm working. I feel like I have to kind of watch the action. It's coming. I don't know when I'm done watching a 3D movie. I'm tired, and I don't go to a movie to do that. The switch beating out the NES. NES Yes, um, I love the SNES. It was a great. It has so much nostalgia for me. But the Switch lets me play with my kids in ways I never could. And I, I would maintain, unless you've got a CRT monitor, if you were to hook up your SNES right now, you would not have as pleasant of an experience as you did when you know when back in the '90s when it was actually sure. You know, I think some of those console. games are amazing though. Fantastic. Yeah, they're games. great. But like, like I said. Uh, there's there's now latency because all the controllers are wireless now and some of those games you know unless they've gone through under the hood to account for that and usually they don't you know <laughs> alrighty has distribution of games from publishers finally caught up from before COVID probably not but they're pretty close there's a lot of games out there right now the number of games that are being released that are pretty hot games that are coming out right now around Gen Con is pretty strong now Derek I don't know do you know the lineup of games yet for Gen Con you don't have to tell us but do you know what it is um well I I could know because I have a schedule but I don't know it off the top of my head (laughs) yeah but I'm I'm telling you folks it's going to be a good lineup of games and I still maintain that if they stop publishing games this year right now I could make a best of 30 list of the year that's how many good games have already come out and there's still more coming I'm really excited about it yeah well uh uh Scott Alden was talking on our stream this morning about uh, the search for Planet X, um, or we were calling it Planet Ten because we were also playing the crew, the quest for Planet Nine. So we we're making that joke, but um, ah. but that 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 game seems really interesting to me. I can't wait to give that a try. Yeah, I mean we're at the point now; I just can't get everything played. But oh my, I played a game that's so good. But anyway, I'll talk about that soon enough. Also, I played some games that aren't so hot, but. Uh, lots of great games. I'm, I think I'm 60 reviews behind at this point. Oh, good grief. Well, that's okay. You know, I'll always, I'll always 
I'll get but it I mean, yeah, your your Q shelf was never bare <laughs> in the the three years I was there. It's the so. lowest it's been in a while. But I also sent boxes of games to the other reviewers, and for a while there, there was nothing coming in. But it's all coming in. I'm excited because today I just got the new KeyForge, and so I haven't oh, opened yeah. it yet. I went and picked up the. I went to my local game store. I was actually this is like my main jam right now is uh, Similo. Uh, so the new Similo deck was at my game, my local game store, and I saw the new KeyForge. But I'm like, I, I don't have anyone locally to like play KeyForge with, and I'm not. It's like if I'm gonna play a game online, there's other games I'd rather play over remote. So I just, I kind of like let KeyForge slide by. But yeah, so well, this new one what, has what's those your favorite double thing cards. about the new set? Yeah, those double cards. I, I hands down. I just want to see what those look like. But I haven't opened it. And haven't even looked in it yet because I wanted to do some stuff with my family tonight. So I just, I will not. I haven't even opened the box, but I know that's what's in it. All righty, folks. So I'm going to end a couple minutes early tonight, but we'll be back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock every night. Daily chat's going. I said we were going to do it for a while. It's here for a good, good bit. So um, <laughs> thank you, Derek, for coming on. And you can see Derek's Absolutely. work all over the Board Game Geek channel. They are constantly putting out stuff also. We are not bored. We have st always stuff to put out. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Derek Porter. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. It was, it was good, to, good to be back. <laughs>